Welcome. I'll be doing a series of videos to assist prospective and current candidate legal practitioners, used to be referred to as candidate attorneys, by providing some insights and information in respect of each aspect of articles of clerkship. I'm currently an admitted attorney, but I received quite a shock when I started my articles as there was so much information and a ton of formalities that I simply was not aware of. I don't want you to find yourself in a similar situation. I will also be doing a series of videos focusing mostly on civil procedure in South African courts. This will be for the benefit of not only candidate legal practitioners, but also attorneys. I will give guidance on how to draft pleadings and notices, as well as tips on court attendances, appearances, instructing sheriffs, and generally whatever I feel may be important. Um, I also intend to create a document of sorts for you to access templates of what has been discussed, such as particulars of claim, pleas, etc., which I'll link in the description of the particular video, uh, so hopefully that will be of assistance. So if you want to keep in touch with this channel, please hit that subscribe button and feel free to give me video suggestions in the comments. But first, let's get started with everything candidates must know before starting articles. The series will be split into several videos due to the length of the topics of discussion. I initially wanted to make one video, but I was worried that I would end up trying to cram too much information into one clip. As I am an attorney and not an advocate, the series will not apply to advocates or pupils becoming advocates as I don't possess the requisite knowledge. And now that that's out the way, let's get started on our first video, which involves a discussion on what articles actually are, as well as the necessary formalities to comply with. Just a heads up, if you think articles will be like starring in suits, you're in for a shock. Okay, episode one, information and formalities pertaining to articles of clerkship. What are articles? At university we are told that we have to complete articles before we can be admitted as an attorney. But what exactly does this mean? Articles, also known as practical vocational training, is a compulsory apprenticeship of sorts for all LLB graduates looking to become attorneys. Candidate attorneys, who are now referred to as candidate legal practitioners, although the titles are interchangeable, uh, either undergo a two-year contract of articles or a one-year contract of articles. Regarding the one-year contract of articles, you will have to successfully complete the full-time program at the School for Legal Practice first. For those students who are still completing the LLB studies, they can either enter into a five-year contract of articles or a three-year contract of articles if you have obtained a three-year undergraduate degree for the three-year contract of articles. Most candidates will conclude a two-year articles contract. What does this mean? This means that the candidate will work for the law firm for a period of two years, during which time the candidate will need to attend practical legal training and pass four admission exams. Note that candidates were previously required to pass a fit and proper test, however this is no longer a requirement under the Legal Practice Act. Many candidates will conclude a one-year contract of articles. After university, I had no clue that this was even an option. Briefly put, when concluding a one-year contract of articles, the candidate is required to have completed the full-time six months school for legal practice offered by the Law Society of South Africa. Alternatively, the one-year long-distance training course offered by UNISA. The available courses will be discussed in a later video. There is also the possibility of entering into a contract of articles for a period of five years, alternatively three years whilst you are still completing your LLB. This process is slightly more complicated and most candidates do not go this route, so if you are intending on going this route, contact the Legal Practice Council in this regard for more information. Your contract of articles will be entered into between yourself and your principal, which is usually one of the partners or the directors of the firm. They will essentially be your mentor. According to the regulations under section 109 subsection 1a of the Legal Practice Act, 
uh, take note that the Attorneys Act has been repealed and replaced with the Legal Practice Act. Under subregulation 5, a candidate attorney may be engaged or retained under a practical vocational training contract by an attorney practicing for his or her own account, practicing as a partner in a firm of attorneys, practicing as a member of a juristic entity, practicing as a state's attorney, who has practiced as a professional assistant in a firm of attorneys for a period of five years within the preceding six years, or in the full-time employ of, or who is a member of Legal Aid South Africa, a legal aid institution which has been approved by the council for the purpose of engaging candidate attorneys, any other institution approved by the council for the purpose of engaging candidate attorneys. Under sub-regulation 6, an attorney engaging a candidate attorney as contemplated in sub-regulation 5a to d must have practiced as an attorney for a period not less than three years or for periods of not less than three years in aggregate during the preceding four years and as contemplated in sub-regulation f must have practiced as an attorney for a period of not less than three years or four periods of not less than three years in the aggregate during the preceding four years prior to being engaged by Legal Aid South Africa or the institution concerned. Subregulation 7. Service by a candidate attorney to any attorney while that attorney is not practicing or has not practiced as provided in subregulation 5 is not deemed to be service under practical vocational training contract for purposes of these regulations. So, to be safe, just double check that your principal fits any of the above descriptions to ensure that your contract of articles is valid. It's very unlikely that there'll be any issues, but if there are, then you've wasted your time, so it's very important. Articles Formalities Numerous formalities that a candidate legal practitioner must comply with when commencing articles. Compliance with these formalities is imperative. Firstly, you need to submit the following with the LPC within two months from the date of your contract. Take note that the LPC refers to the Legal Practice Council which was formed recently. Previously, the Law Society was the regulatory body for legal practitioners. Okay, firstly, the original signed practical vocational training contract and two copies thereof. Check in the description, I've placed a link to a template that you can use. Just click on that and you can complete the template. If you're unable to download the template, you can arrange with the LPC to collect a hard copy or have it posted or sent via DOCX. You, your principal, and two witnesses must initial each page of the contract and sign same. Secondly, a certified copy of your identity document, alternatively proof of your date of birth. A certified copy of your LLB degree, alternatively proof of compliance with the requirements for the LLB degree obtained at a South African university. Alternatively, a certified copy of a law degree obtained at a foreign university and certification by SAQA that the degree is equivalent to the LLB degree. Payments of the registration fee in the amount of 345 Rand. Please note that this is as of 2021, it is likely to increase. Proof to the satisfaction of the LPC that you are fit and proper person to serve as a candidate legal practitioner under a practical vocational training contract. There is no, this is no longer done by way of a fit and proper test, but rather by submitting two written character references not older than six months by persons in a position of authority. Next, a written request by the principal that a certificate of right of appearance be issued to the candidate legal practitioner in terms of section 25 subsection 5a or 25 subsection 5b if applicable. Uh, take note that right of appearance will be addressed later in this uh, video series. Next, a certified copy of the report slash certificate confirming completion of the program of structured coursework of at least 400 notional hours over a period of not more than six months. This is only applicable if you're registering a one-year contract of articles. Next, you've got the registration application form completed by the principal and the candidate attorney. A link to this form is in the description, so take a look. You can click on the link and you can complete it. If the candidate legal practitioner has a criminal conviction, an affidavit must be submitted, submitted setting out the details and sentence. Even if the conviction has been expunged or pardoned, you, you need to set it out. A copy of the court record is also required. If there are pending criminal charges or disciplinary inquiries against the candidate legal practitioner, an affidavit must be submitted setting out the details. Having a criminal record makes life very difficult for any individual in the legal profession, especially when it comes to being admitted, so be careful out there. 
Take note that you'll find a link in the description to all the guidelines for registration of a practical vocational training contract, otherwise known as an articles contract. Click on the link, you can see all the guidelines clearly, just make sure you follow it and comply with that strictly. Further formalities such as admission exams and practical legal training will be discussed throughout the series. As I said at the beginning, I'm not going to cramp everything into one. Conclusion I hope this video has briefly illustrated what articles are, as well as the formalities which must be complied with when registering your contract. Stay tuned for the next video in which I'll be discussing practical legal training, also known as PLT, as well as admission exams. Please feel free to let me know in the comments what you would like a video on. Bear in mind that I have a comprehensive series of videos coming up which also include practical aspects of the legal profession, such as drafting pleadings and attending court. Also hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with these videos and don't forget to share with any aspiring attorneys out there.